What is up my ninjas, Shinobi here with another Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls video for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Witch Doctor, the two week gear up challenge that I've been doing so far. I've been putting, you know, a lot of effort into that, researching builds and specs and all these kind of things, certain items that work well with the Witch Doctor, all kinds of things, just really trying to get a good grasp of the character so that I can ideally get it to, you know, the what I would like to get it to. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about in this video is a bunch of things. Um, first off, we're going to go do GOM. I'm on Torment 6. I want to see where my, my character's gear is right now. So far, I'm just over halfway through the challenge. Uh, I've been doing about 8 hours a day because I want, didn't want to do it too much so it seemed like unrealistic so that if, like someone else wanted to do this as well and have a good understanding of what, ta what, it, you know, what kind of effort it takes to gear out a character how much time needs to be put in, stuff like that. So I've done about 56 hours play time currently as of this video that I'm making right now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into uh, all of the stuff too that I've learned uh, since I started out with this character. Some items that work really well, some good starter up items, some kind of specs that you want to like kind of focus yourself into right off the bat, and some additional tips for you guys if you want to do this as well. Now this uh, challenge here, I started doing this challenge uh, strictly with no gear whatsoever, just some blood shards, some crafting materials, and I started out doing Torment 1 on day 1, uh, and then I progress through there and progress through there. And you can also follow my Facebook down below where I take screenshots every day where I show you guys a progression that I'm making. Uh, I still got another week left to do of this challenge. And then also I'm live streaming that stuff like every every day that I'm you know live streaming. So the link's down below for that too. Uh, so we're going to give you a bunch of tips in this video, help you out. But let's go ahead and do GOM right off the bat here and see uh, just see how well we can do with, uh, with a taking on GOM here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to spawn a bunch of my uh, little guys here and the way that you can do that is by the passive that you have when you use things like fire bats uh, when you channel these abilities you can spawn these guys and these guys are going to be good right off the bat so I'm going to need their help right off the bat to help me uh, kill Gom and then I can if I need to I can use my fetish army ability and uh, and kill him after that so alright so we're getting quite a few here we want to try and spawn as many as we can. We're almost to a pretty good place here. Okay. So we're at like 9 right now. I think you can get up to, I think 13 is like the most you can possibly get. Let's just go with this though. I don't want it to be a super long video. <laughs> so okay, let's close this out. And let's, let's get in there and see how we can do here. He has quite a bit of health, so going to be interesting to see what we can do here. He has 3 billion health, so going to be interesting here. Let's go ahead and take him down. There we go. So he's dead. I didn't even have to use my fetish army uh, because I had these guys already summoned already. Um, but if I needed to, then, uh, you know, obviously I could pop that and get eight more guys and that'd be really good. So, uh, so there we go. So he's dead and now let's go back to town. Let's talk about this so far. Now, is this character a hundred percent ready for Torment 6? In my opinion, no. I mean, you can do Torment 4 really efficiently right now, but it's going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more gear. And I'm going to talk about what that gear is needed, um, in this video as well. So, uh, first off, what did we do in the very beginning of this character? Day one. So, completely naked character. I had some crafting materials, blood shards, things like that. So, I decided to get a bunch of rare gear from Kadala. And then, uh, well, I'm in, not in bounty right now, so you can't see Kadala. I'm not in adventure mode. Um, so, I go through a cap Kadala, get all the gear that I could. And then, if I needed to, after that, I crafted a couple different items as well, too. Just whatever I needed. Just rare gear. Just getting, you know, stats like vitality, uh, intelligence, crit chance, crit damage. Focusing on those things. Armor is really important. Uh, resist is not as important because you get resist from your intelligence. So uh, focusing mainly on armor and life and life regen, things like that. Um, those are the priorities. But, you know, resistance does help, though. I'm not saying don't get any resist whatsoever. Uh, then after that, I re-rolled whatever items I needed to at... Uh, you know, the Mystic, and then I had my rare gear to start off with. Now, what did I do after that? Well, I went into here, and I got some materials so I could craft 
uh, these bracers right here, the Reaper's Wraps. Now, you get this plan from killing Malthael, and you can also get the material from killing Malthael, so you can craft these. Now, these are a really good item to have right off the bat, because you can your health globes restore 25-30% to 30 of your primary resource, uh, which is really, really great. Um, and so I can show you, for instance, of the ones that I have here, which are these ones. I got the Intelligence, the Vitality, I rerolled to get Crit Chance, and then also with the Fire... Uh, fire is also a definite key as well too, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But the Reaper's Wraps work really well because I'm also using items like Thing of the Deep right here, where my pickup radius is really big, which is really great. And then I have uh, like Grave Injustice, which the range is extended by you know your pickup radius, which works really well with that. Uh, so I was using the Reaper's Wraps before, but I'm not using them now, and I'll explain more of that in just a little bit here. But they're really good because the reason why Reaper's Reaper's Wraps is one of the best starter items for any character in the game is because you want to maximize your effective DPS. So when you're going through and, you know, killing things and, you know, you're going to run out of mana really quickly because you don't do a lot of damage, right? You're going to run out of mana before the mob dies or whatever, but, you know, if you're killing a lot of trash mobs around a champ pack or something, uh, you're going to those trash mobs are going to die, they're going to give you health glows, which is going to suck it up, and it's going to give you a bunch of mana, and you're going to be able to burst out more damage. So very, very good for starter characters on any character in the game, Reaper's Wraps. I believe that's why Blizzard even put them into the game, because they wanted you to have that extra push. So definitely really good. The other item that's really good as well, too, uh, that I noticed is the Devastator. Now, we've been using the Devastator in the past, because it is... Uh, you know, it. I mean, it's it's really good for the fire builds out there, and that's what you want to primarily start off with with the witch doctor is a fire build, uh, right off the bat, like day one. You want to you want to get your stuff into fire. Eventually, you're gonna split it up into either cold or physical, but we're gonna talk about those two in just a little bit. So. Why fire? What's so great about fire? Well, pretty easy. Fire bats with vampire bats is great because uh, this ability right here, you, your fire bats no longer has a channeling cost. So when you use things like this thing right here, the fetish uh, psychophants there, I think it's called, I have no idea. And so what happens is when you cast a physical realm spell, the longer you're casting it for and stuff, you're going to get more little fetishes to come help you. So definitely really great. So you can literally sit here and you can see my mana is just going up and up and up and up. And I'm summoning these little guys. So they help you out. And it makes it so your mana is a little bit more efficient too. Because you're going to have mana problems right in the beginning. And it enables you to use things like Pierce the Veil. Because Pierce the Veil says your mana costs are increased by 30%. But if this is free then you're literally just getting a 20% increase in damage, which is awesome. So that's why Pierce of Veil is really good right off the bat. Also, you want to go with Fire because you want to use Midnight Feast. Now, Midnight Feast is great because it increases the damage of your zombie dogs, so it doesn't really matter too much, but the Gargantuan is where it's at. Gargantuan is going to solo things for you. And what you want to use is this right here, Gargantuan Wrathful Protector, the Fire one. You summon this guy, he gets up, he does crazy damage, even when you're undergeared. On Torment 1, he can kill a champ pack by himself in less than 3 seconds in rare gear. As long as you have, you know, if you have like this with fire damage, this with fire damage, really great for the start off the bat to get you going. So definitely something really good. That's why I started off with fire in the beginning, and now it's starting to angle towards physical. And we'll get into that uh, in just a minute here. So, so, so the two choices that you want to go towards with the Witch Doctor is you have the pet build, which is physical damage, and you have the uh, and you have the um, the cold build for the dot damage. So you have the Jade Harvester set. I haven't rerolled these yet. I do have three pieces already, and I'm working towards it. Now the six piece says Soul Harvest consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing the remaining damage. So it's insane. It does crazy damage. You can use things like. Uh, like Haunt right here, which is cold, and it's 4,000% weapon damage. So you've maybe seen some videos on YouTube or something like that where they'll just dot up everything like crazy, and then you know, then they'll use, uh, then they'll use their Soul Harvest, and boom, one shot a Torment Six monster. That's how you do it, and you want to build cold damage for that. So very important. Now I may go that route. I do have this, and I also have 
Uh, this as well too, which is popular in that build. Uh, I have cold damage bracers, even though the special property is not too good. So I am building towards that uh, slowly. I think I also have an amulet too. Yeah, I have a cold amulet right here that I need to re-roll to get crit damage on. Uh, so I do have some cold stuff already for that, getting some stuff going towards that. But for me, I really like going with the pet build. Now, the reason why you want to go with physical damage on the pet build is because you have your fetish army right here. And it is a physical spell uh, by itself. But you can get Legion of Daggers, which increases the number of dagger-wielding fetishes summoned by three. So I get eight of them instead of five, which is really great. And then you have the Tiki Torches, which a lot of people have said to me, why don't you just use fire instead? Because you only get two more uh, fetishes, and I'd rather have three more. Considering they all do so much damage, it makes more sense to get... Uh, plus physical damage. Fire is viable for the fetishes in the end, but you're going to profit more out of physical out of it, uh, just from testing that I've seen done, things like that. So very important. Now, what are the items that are needed for the pet build? Because what do I have so far? Because from as fast as I killed Gom there, I should be complete, right? Challenge over. I won, you know? No, it's not done yet. I have, I still need about five pieces of gear, I believe, to complete the character. And uh, I'm going to go over some of the pieces of gear here that I have right now. Um, so I have the Mask of Jerem. Now, this is the number one priority for you to get when you're going for the pet build. Uh, that's the reason why I'm using the fetishes right now, because it makes the fetishes so strong and do so much damage. Uh, in the beginning, you're going to use the Gargantuan, but once you get all the physical and everything like that, you're no longer going to use the Gargantuan anymore, and your fetishes are just going to be out forever and doing crazy damage because of the Zuni Moss set, which gives your pets, uh, your fetish army lasts until they die. So they're out like all the time, and it's really, 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 really strong. So with Mask of Jerem, you want to focus on that right in the beginning. Now some tips for getting Mask of Jerem. I did rifts like crazy to try and get it, but also you collect blood shards and you can spend those blood shards at Kadala to try and get this helmet, and I did get it, and it's like the best Mask of Jerem I've ever seen. It's amazing. It's almost max on intelligence. I got max on crit chance, 99% pet damage. The most I think you can get is 100%. Uh, it's even got pickup radius on there, vitality. It's got everything that you need, and it's such a huge boost to uh, your effective DPS for your pets, and your fetishes just melt things, as you saw in the uh, GOM encounter there. So uh, I am still using the Gargantuan though because my spec is not complete yet. I still have some things that I'm working with it. I need his help a little bit, but once I don't need his help anymore, then we'll switch it up. So there's Mask of Jerem. Also using the Augild set here, which you get fetish army damage on there. Intelligence, vitality, uh, you can get armor or life percent. I just got life percent, so uh, I didn't want to roll it too many times, but uh, so the Odd Guild is really good as well, too. Uh, you're going to be shooting for the three-piece set bonus there, uh, which reduces damage from elites by 15% and increases damage to elites by 15%. You only need two pieces for this, because once I find the Re uh, Reign of Royal Grandeur, then I'll be able to unlock the third set thing there. So that's what I'm looking for. This ring is going to get up upgraded to a Reign of Royal Grandeur, hopefully, with patch 2.0.5 that's coming out soon. And that's going to be my goal that I'm shooting for there, to get that Reign of Royal Grandeur get that extra 15% uh, bonus to elites, and also a lot of other things that we're going to talk about too. Uh, I am using the Jade Harvester 2-piece right now just because, uh, you know, it's something to have while I'm waiting for the other items, uh, and, you know, they're pretty good. I got the Aug Guilds here. Now, I did get physical damage there, 6% crit chance. Uh, so getting into that physical, getting the physical in there. Right now, I do still have fire on this amulet. I've been trying to upgrade this amulet like crazy. Uh, what I'm searching for is a Blackthorn's amulet with physical damage on it. You may think, Blackthorn's amulet? That's what? People make fun of those items, you know? I'll have to explain a little bit more as the video goes on. The gloves I'm using for Mage Fist right now have some fire damage. That's why I'm still using the Gargantuan. Uh, but once I get that stuff out of there, it's going to be more effective because I'm going to... I'm going to switch this out, and I'm going to be able to get the Tasker and Theo Gloves, which have a special property that increase your pet's attack speed by, I believe, up to 50%, which is a huge boost. You thought I killed Gom quick there. I get Tasker and Theo Gloves, he's, he's gone, like, so quickly. Uh, it's insane. I do have the Blackthorns belt right now, which is great. That's one item I need towards the collection. Uh, like I said, I was using the pants there. Using Ice Climbers for now because I'm looking for the Zuni Moss boots. 
uh, use the Stone of Jordan. I'm going to reroll that crit chance to physical damage uh, once I get all the pieces to the puzzle together. But for now, uh, the crit chance is okay. Um, so we'll stick with that. Um, like I showed you earlier, I'm using the Thing of the Deep offhand here, uh, which is, is good for now. It's mainly for a DPS upgrade and also the, the property that's on there, the nice, the nice pickup radius. Uh, but that's going to get switched out by this because I need this for the set to get that going. I'm going to get three pieces of Zuni Moss. It's going to be a chest piece, going to be the boots, and going to be the offhand. So that way I get the four-piece bonus with Arena Royal Grandeur. So you can see that I do have the chest piece right now. I found this just the other day, and it is quite a good roll. I wish the intelligence was higher, but still quite a good roll. And the weapon we're using here is a Doombrainer. Now, physical damage is great. I like it. I may go with the Sunkeeper instead, because you can get 30% damage to elites on that. Uh, so if I find that, I'll go with it, but this, there's no auction house anymore. It's about what you find. So it's a good temporary thing. I may change it out. We'll see in the future. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you something that I put together here. And uh, this is kind of my uh, my game plan right here for how I want to gear the character, how I want to go with everything. So helmet, I'm doing Mask of Jerem like I showed you. Augild shoulders with the fetish army, I did get that. Tasker and Theo, haven't got that yet. Uh, physical amulet with black thorns, I'll explain that in just a second. And Zuni, uh, Zuni chest, got that. The bracers, the Augilds, got that. Blackthorn's belt, got that. Uh, Stone of Jordan, got that. And Rena Royal Granger, still need to get that. Uh, Blackthorn pants, looking for that. Zuni Moss boots, looking for that. And Star Metal is a good item that you can do uh, if you don't have the full Zuni set. But if you do have the full Zuni set, to go with Sunkeeper or uh, Doombrainer. And then also, I already have the offhand uh, for the Zuni there. So, why is it that we're going with the Aw Guilds, and why are we going with the Zuni, and why are we going with the Blackthorns? Well, with Reign of Royal Grandeur, you're able to get all three max bonuses from all of them. So what that means is that I'm going to get... Let me close, let me close this over here. That means what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 250 Vitality, uh, increased damage to elites by 10%, reduced damage from elites by 10%, extra gold, and immune to Desecrator, Molten, and Plague ground effects on monsters. Now, on the amulet, there's not that many really good amulets in the game. So if I can get a Blackthorns amulet that has physical damage on it, then that's just a bonus. Instead of taking this from a three-piece bonus, I'll be taking it to a four-piece bonus because I'm not just using just the belt and just the pants. I'll be using three pieces with the Arena Royal Grandeur. So it'll actually max out my character a little bit more, give me a little bit better survivability while still maintaining the character's gear the way it is. I already talked about the Odd Guilds getting the 15% damage to Elite. So with those two together, that's 25% damage to Elites. Let's say I get Sunkeeper, that's 30%. So that's 55% damage to Elites plus my Stone of Jordan, which is another 30%. That's 85% damage to Elites and 60% damage to Physical. Uh, because I'll have, actually it'll be 40% damage to the physical, so I'll have the, on, the, on the amulet and on the bracers, and I don't think anywhere else I'll have it. Oh yes, I'll have it on here too, so it'll be 60%, because i got to rework that to physical. So it'll be 60% damage to the physical, 85% damage to elites, which is really needed to just, you know, push your character from efficient on Torment 4 to efficient on Torment 6. You'd just be plowing through those elites, your pets will be critting for crazy amounts, just owning them up like crazy. Definitely really fun. So let's take a look at the spec here that I'm going to end up going with. And let's see. So this is the ideal skill build down here. So I'm going to do a big bad voodoo with slam dance because you get that nice increased burst damage. A fetish army with legion of daggers, which we've talked about. Piranhas with piranha nato. You get extra damage out of that and it also can grab the champ pack for you and hold them still so your pets can kill them. Mass Confusion with Paranoia, because you get some nice increased damage out of that, uh, which I can show you that skill real quick here, if you don't know what that does. Mass Confusion, Paranoia. Enemies in the, in, uh, the area of Mass Confusion take 20% additional damage for 12 seconds, which is beautiful. You can just really get that stuff down really quickly. Then you have the Fire Bats, because it's going to help you summon more fetishes, and also good for mana. You Spirit Walk with Honored Guest, that's going to give you some mana back and some survivability. The ideal passives are going to be Gruesome Feast, Pierce the Veil, uh, Grave Injustice, and Fetish, uh, the Fetish passive that we talked about there. So the reason why you want to go with 
Uh, you're not going to go with the mid because the, the idea is you don't want to go with the midnight feast. You want to get that out of there, so that way that's why you're not going to use gargantuan anymore, and that's why you're not going to use fire anymore. You're going to get rid of the midnight feast. You're not going to use zombie dogs. You're not going to use gargantuan. You're going to focus on uh, the fetishes and get them as strong as possible so that you can do crazy damage. Uh, they do, you know, even though the gargantuan can crit for like 300 million or something like that. He's one monster. He's, he's one mob. So he literally sometimes just goes off and kills a trash mob, or sometimes and go kills something you don't want him to kill. But with using the fetishes, you have like 13 guys or whatever, like at least 8 guys charging in, each hitting for like 30 million each hit. So, you know, there's just like 300 million, 300 million, 300, like it's crazy. And it's so much faster and so much better uh, than going with relying on the Gargantuan. But the Gargantuan is definitely good right off the bat. So that's kind of my goal towards the whole thing to get that gear going. All I need now is the Reign of Royal Grandeur. Uh, all I need is the um, Blackthorn's Pants, Blackthorn's Amulet, the Zuni Boots, and... Uh, and then maybe switch out the weapon there if I need to, and the Tasker and Theo gloves. So hopefully, just hopefully, I can get all the stuff that I need to complete the build and see exactly what it's capable of doing in Rifts on Torment 6 or anything in the game. And hopefully we can do that before the two-week challenge is up. I hope you guys did learn some stuff from this video. Hope, hope that it helps you with, you know, getting your Witch Doctor ready and starting one out if you want to start one or if you want to progress yours and make it even better or something like that. I I know it was a longer video, but it's a lot of information I had to go over here, and there's so much more information I could go into if I really needed to. So uh, make sure you guys are subscribed for more videos, Diablo 3, plus other games in the future. And uh, my name is Shinobi, and until next time, thanks for watching.